Now in this video, I did previously record it, which is why there, everything is written out here, but there was no sound in the original recording. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over this again, um, just so that we can have the audio with the video as well. So this is the first example of section 1.2 and it says find the limit using numerical and analytical approaches. And the limit is the limit as x approaches 8 of x minus 8 over x squared minus 7x minus 8. So the numerical approach is to create a table. And what I want to do is I want to approach 8 from both sides, both from the left of 8 and from the right of 8. So if I create a uh, table here, I put 8 in the middle, and just to the left of 8 is 7.9. And if I want to get closer, I could put 7.99. And if I want to get closer to still, I can put 7.999, okay? Getting closer and closer and closer to the value 8. Now from the right-hand side, 8.1 is pretty close to 8. I can get even closer still by doing 8.01. And I can get an even more closer by using 8.001. So I'm real close to 8 on both sides of it, but then I'm getting even closer and closer to it as I approach 8. Now, if I plug this value into the function, I should be ending up with these um, fractions here. So let's go ahead and verify that. Um, if you plug in, and I think I did some, some algebra over here, but let's go ahead and figure this out. I'm gonna cal program my calculator first. So my numerator is x minus eight, close parentheses, divided by, and then now my denominator x squared minus 7x minus 8, close the parentheses, so that it knows this is my entire numerator and this is my entire denominator, okay? Now I'm going to hit enter, but I'm going to ignore that value because I'm not sure what was plugged in for x um, the last time I used this calculator. So I am going to start by using this number, 7.9. So I'm gonna type 7.9, and then I'm gonna hit this button here above the on that says store, and then I'm gonna hit my variable x. When I hit enter, it now programs the calculator that x is now 7.9. So if I go back up to that function up there, and I hit enter to copy it, if I hit enter again, it'll plug in 7.9. And so I'm typing that in there now. Now I'm gonna to try to convert this to a fraction, and let's see, yes, it is 10 over 89, as I have here on the paper. So now we're gonna move to the next one, 7.99 store as x. Hit enter, highlight my function again, there it is, hit enter, copy it, hit it again to plug in 7.99. Then I'm gonna hit math and one for fraction, and it'll convert that to a fraction. So 100 over 899. Now I'm going to do 7.999 stores x, go copy my function, hit enter to plug it in, and then do math and fraction again, and I get uh, 1000 over 8999, okay? Now I'm going to go the other direction, so I want to get closer and closer this way, okay? So then what I end up with is 1.8 um, store x and I'm gonna go back to my function and hit enter and then I'm gonna change it to a fraction so I get 10 over 91 then now I'm gonna do 8.01 store x go back to my function hit enter hit it again to plug it in and change that to a fraction and I get 100 over 901 now I'm going to do 8.001, store x, go up, hit enter, copy it, hit enter to plug it in, oops, clear, math 1 to change it to a fraction, and I get 1,000 over um, 9,001. So you can ignore this parts here that I have because I didn't really use those to figure out the problem. However, you could anticipate that in either direction, notice how you end up getting one more zero after each number. So I could guess that I would have four zeros if I kept going, okay? Also, if you notice this is um, 
This has two digits, so does this. This has two digits, so does the denominator. Three digits in the numerator, three digits in the denominator. Four digits in the numerator, four digits in the denominator. So I can assume that there's gonna be um, here, since I have five digits, that I should have five digits in my denominator. However, notice that this way was approaching um, like 9,000 but with an extra digit and this one is approaching 9,000 but with an extra digit. So I can assume that this would be 9,000 but with an extra digit. Okay. Now if I reduce this, I can reduce with the zeros and I end up with just 1 ninth here. Now that's the numerical approach. I get 1 ninth using the numerical approach. Okay. If I use the analytical approach, that means that I have to um, use algebra. Now, I went ahead and did the graphing approach as well, but this was more so just to confirm, okay? It really wasn't to help me figure out what that value was. So if I were to have drawn this, this is the graph that I would get, okay? Now, what happens is, is if I draw this exactly the way it is, I have a hole right here when x is equal to 8 in my graph. However, if I reduce this fraction, then the new fraction, the new function, will look exactly like this one will, but that hole would be filled in, which would allow me to um, substitute 8 into it. Now I can't, because if I substitute 8 into my denominator, I'll get 0, which will make the whole fraction undefined. So I do need to reduce this or simplify this fraction excuse me, before I can take the limit. So if I reduce it, I'm gonna factor the denominator. The x minus eight factors will reduce, cancel, and I'll end up with one over x plus one, which has this same graph, but now there's no longer a hole, it's filled in with a dot, okay? And if I substitute eight into my new function, I get one over eight plus one, which is exactly the same value as we got before, one over nine.